Here's an example that asks us to calculate the flux of a particular vector field um, in a particular direction out through this hyperboloid of one sheet. Now we've seen that before. Um, and we know that the flux integral, we want to go along the surface, right? And looking at the alignment of the vector field to the normal to the surface, that's going to tell us how much does the vector field tend to break out through the surface. We're going to sum up those quantities all along that to measure the flux. Um, and we know that we can do that by doing f dotted with the partials of our parameterization with respect to the two parameters in the parameterization. And we'll just integrate over that region in parameter space. So we can tie the integral of the surface back to this integral. Now we have to be a little bit careful. We have this hyperboloid uh, between z equals negative 2 and z equals 1. So it looks a little bit like this. Um, and there are two normals here to the surface. There's a normal that points out away from the z-axis and a normal that points into, in towards the z-axis. So we have to make sure that this goes in the correct direction. It may be that we need this other normal. If you drew the cross product in the other order, you just get a vector in the opposite direction. So um, we'll have to check that once we find that cross product. Now we actually use the fact that this had symmetry around the z-axis to parameterize this surface using um, using uh, cylindrical coordinates. So we knew that x squared plus y squared is r squared, so r is the square root of z squared plus 1. So in our usual r cos and theta, r sine theta z coordinates that we get from a, a cylindrical transformation, we just um, replace the r's with the square root of z squared plus 1. Now the bounds on our parameters are theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and z is going to climb from top to bottom, so from negative 2 to 1, as given in the problem. OK, so there's our parameterization. Then we can calculate the partials with respect to theta and the partials with respect to z. We did that in a previous problem because we had the same surface. And we found out that r sub theta cross r sub z was equal to this quantity. Now, our concern is, is this um, the normal that is out through the hyperboloid away from the z-axis? Or is it the one that's in towards the z-axis? So when we calculate this cross product, maybe we got the one that's out in the direction we want, and maybe we didn't. Maybe, maybe we want the other one. The other one is just going to be the cross product in the other direction, which just puts a negative sign on each. So what we ought to do is just maybe think about um, a particular point on the surface, maybe one where x and y are both positive, um, so that we're, we're out in, in this region. And just think about which direction does the, does the normal point. So I'm out here on the surface of the hyperboloid um, in some place where x and y are both positive. So if x and y are both positive, both sine and cosine are positive. So this, this direction is positive in the x direction, and that is positive. And this um, is, um, if we're up here on this part, it's downward. And if we're down on this part, it's upward, depending on what z is, right? So since that's positive and that's positive, we're getting a vector that's going out, right, in the positive x direction and in the positive y direction. And so this is the normal that's outward. It's the one that we want. But if we had somehow, uh, if, we had, if we had, for example, if we had computed r sub z cross r sub theta, we would have had negative signs. And when we examined a particular point, we could tell that that was the inward normal and not the outward normal. So just, make, just be careful that you, that you uh, read the problem and figure out which normal that you want to use. OK, so now that we've got that, we can go ahead and assemble our integral. So we've got to do the integral over our region. Let's see, theta is going from 0 to 2 pi. And um, z, z is going from negative 2 to 1. And we have to do f dotted with that. Now f, its first component is x, and its second component is y. So basically, there's our x, right? That's the first component of f, and there's our y, and then we just have 0. So if we do that dot product, if we multiply these two together, we get z squared plus 1 cosine squared. And we multiply these two together, we get z squared plus 1 sine squared. And then in the field here, the z component is 0. 0 times 0 is going to be 0. So we basically get z squared plus 1 times cosine squared and times sine squared. So add them together, and we just have to do this integral, z squared plus 1 where z is going from negative 2 to 1, and theta is going from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, this integral's easy enough that we could just 
pop it out real quick. We just have to find an and derivative of z squared plus 1, which would be 1 third z cubed plus z. Evaluate that between negative 2 and 1. And then integrate that with respect to theta. So we get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, let's see, when we plug in 1, we get 1 third plus 1. That would be 4 thirds. Minus, when we plug in negative 2, we get negative 8 thirds and negative 2. All right, and we just need to integrate that d theta. Let's see. So we've got uh, neg we've got four thirds minus minus eight thirds. That would be four thirds plus eight thirds. That's twelve thirds. That's four. And then uh, minus minus two is plus two. So we have four plus two. That's six. So the integral from zero to two pi of six d theta, which is going to be six times two pi, since the integral of one d theta is just theta, and theta between two pi and zero is two pi. So we get 12 pi as the flux out of that surface.